Hey yo guys, what's good, what's happening, and what's going on? Today's the day. Today's the day. We're gonna figure out what the hell's going on with the Trans Am, but you wanna see something kinda crazy right now? Look at all the dirt daubers in here. Sweet Jesus, I come over to this window and there's gotta be at least six of them on it. That's insane. Dirt dauber right there, dirt dauber up there. Where the hell are they coming from? They got a nest in here or something. Oh, that guy found his way out. He's smart. The rest of these guys are stupid. They won't sting you or anything. They literally eat spiders. They're kind of harmless. They're just, there's so many. That's kind of insane. I almost want to let a raid bug bomb in here off just to murder them all. But uh, something you can actually use on them if I have any left is brake cleaner. It, uh, or carb cleaner even. Dries them right out. You know, oh, sorry, wrong thing to shake. You just spray them down there and they just kind of, kind of die off. Yeah, see, they're, they're not having it right now. There's some for you, there's some for you, there's some for you. Yeah. They'll buzz, they'll zap. They'll gradually uh, fail that life. Literally sounds like I'm electrocuting them. Whatever, anyway. Shouldn't waste carb cleaner on bugs. But today what we're gonna do is we're gonna disconnect this battery, we're gonna put it back in the car, and we're gonna diagnose the power failure. Because uh, I'd really like to get down to that. Well, frig, this door opened. Thought I had it closed. It's uh, a little bit windy out today. Not too bad, but not too good either. So let's uh, go ahead and get that battery disconnected. We'll test it with the voltmeter to see what we're hitting. As far as power after charging all week, I don't know if you can overcharge a battery. I think that battery charger is a little bit smarter than that. Once it hits a certain level, it goes into trickle mode, but let's unplug it and then we'll grab the voltmeter and we'll test the posts and make sure we have, I think it's 12 something when it's not attached and then 14 two when it is. Let's go ahead here. Uh, which one's the power for that thing? That one right there. Disconnect you, disconnect you, disconnect you. Stop. Let's go grab the multimeter here. <coughs> Set you to DC voltage 20, and we have 12.6, good enough. I don't know if you guys saw that. Hopefully you did, and you might've. So we have 12.6 volts, battery is full to the brim. So what we'll do now is we'll go ahead and we'll pop the, uh, the hood on the car and we'll get this all situated. All right, first step, unlock the car. I don't think I left it unlocked. All right, so. What I'm thinking is we'll plug the battery pack back into the GoPro because this thing does not have super amount of battery life. Now I don't know where the fuse box is under the hood. I know it's around here somewhere. I should really reference the coloring book. But I have a feeling all the fuses are in the actual cabin. Honestly, I'm willing to bet my draw problem is the headlights because poppy uppy headlights are garbage despite popular belief. But uh, let's grab that battery. Let's fire this back into the car. So, all these extra accessory cables that I had for powering different things in the car and for powering my stereo. Um, okay, I gotta make sure that dome light doesn't turn on. Maybe I'll just take the bulb out of it because otherwise I could run into a problem. I honestly don't know how to do that. Where's the fuse panel on this thing? You know, it's been such a long time since I've worked on this car that I can't remember where anything is. I'm probably gonna have to Google it. Because normally under the hood of the car, you have a fuse panel on modern vehicles anyway. Maybe this one here, being old as toast, doesn't have that, that ability. But, because I'm honestly not seeing a single fuse panel anywhere on this car. You know, I'm gonna unlock the passenger side door too. Just check around there. We'll have to do some digging. Luckily, I got the coloring book on standby so I can find out where the hell the fuse. I'm not a mechanic, but Google is your friend. So let me go ahead and do some research here. This is why I wanna a laptop out in the garage. I'm over here, I can hear one of those friggin' dirt daubers just still giving her. Okay, so there's no fuse block underneath the hood, but there is a main one underneath the, um, somewhere inside the vehicle. Okay, but where is the damn thing? It's on the driver's side? Oh yeah, there it is. It's actually marked fuses. The fuses are actually right there where it says fuses. But it looks like I don't know if there's a screw in there. I don't feel any screws. Oh, there's a screw or something in the back. 
There we go. It's just a little twist thing. Cool. And all your fuses are somewhere up under there. Lovely. Like that's not gonna be an awkward thing to work on. Son of a bitch. Oh man. Mechanics are underpaid. All right, let's uh, hook up the battery and see what kind of a parasitic draw we have and then we'll figure it out from there. I knew it was around there somewhere because I remember playing in there, but let's get this battery hooked up. At least the positive feed because I'm gonna run my meter on the negative. Not the greatest ratchet to use guys. It's totally not a Mastercraft, which I'm not saying Mastercraft is good. A lot of people swear by Snap-on. Then I saw a bunch of posts of people making fun of Snap-on, so like, I don't know. Tools are tools. Use them until they break and then replace them. All right, that one's holding on for dear life. Now, where's that ground? Now, as for this, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna get you nice and high, because I'm gonna attach one of the posts. I'm gonna use my clamps to do this, I think. Might be easier. So right now, with the car turned off, that's as high as she goes as 10 amp draw. Well, if something's drawing 10 amps, we got a problem. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm going to attach the red line right to the battery. All right, let's test the voltage again here. Okay, so there's voltage draw, like there should be though. Holy crap, this is not easy. Especially with the camera in the way. Let me get you guys out of the way here. I see why people do this kind of work and don't YouTube it. Jesus Murphy. These cheap clamps from Canadian Tire are exactly that. Dollarama level of cost. Okay, what the hell, man? Can I just wedge it in there? Come on, just freaking hold on. Oh, this sucks. Okay, what about going from the back? I need a better way to mount that, so... These shit clamps aren't gonna work because they keep moving around. Oh, what do I got? What do I got in here that can do the job better than those shit clamps? Do I have a small vice grip? Do I have electrical tape? I'll just tape the sea sucker to it. I'll even use masking tape. I don't give a care. I don't give a care. One thing I do know is I need some water. I'm thirsty. Well, I'm gonna try an even smaller clamp and see if I can get this to work. A third pair of hands here would be freaking awesome. Or I'm just really doing this wrong, so it's always that. So are we getting anything? Well, it kind of helps when... Okay, so that's there. So let's go over to amps. 10 amps, are we getting a draw? No. 200 milliamps? No. 20 milliamps? Nothing. Well, what the hell? How are we not getting a draw? I know there's a parasitic draw on this thing. We're on DC current. Like, plugged into the car, we're at 11.87 volts. I don't know, maybe my multimeter's broken. Cause like, we're dropping volts hard. I don't know, man. I don't know, I think I might have just a, a botched multimeter. See what I'm thinking is the headlights aren't going all the way down and turning off the uh, the car. But I should be seeing an amperage draw if there is an amperage draw. And nothing's coming across. Let's go here. I am not doing this right. You go into common. You go into amps. Maybe I, I blew out. Because when I have it over here, I can get signal. But when I have it into the amps, there's nothing. Maybe I wrecked this thing. She is very old. All right. Let's scrap this idea here. It took me long enough to hook up these probes too. Let's um, see if I have another volt me or multimeter around here. I know I do somewhere, I just don't know where. All right guys, I was right. I do have another multimeter around. Look at it, it's so brand new. It still has the plastic on the freaking screen. Um, Dad got me this one for Christmas one year. If you remember the video where I fixed the fan, that plug in the wall light up thing to test for power and my little node, my little thing that you can use to check for, for power. Well, both of these came from that kit. I'm just gonna take all this plastic off because it's so satisfying. So this only has two options for the probes. Really, 200 milliamps is all it can do. Well, let's hope the battery draw ain't that high or otherwise she's gonna pop like a zit. All right, let's go over to What's the highest voltage you can do? You can do 300 volts. So let's see here. I'm just gonna do a quick volt test across the battery posts and see how much just plugging it into the car and running it through the thing caused problems. We're at 11.65 now. I'm wondering if the battery's shot. Like if you have a bad battery, would it just have parasitic loss? I wonder. Cause this battery is pretty old and I've brought it back to life multiple freaking times. Like. Way more than I should have. Okay, 
All right, then let's go over to 20. So I got it on 200 milliamps and we are currently having a draw of, it's slowly coming down. We'll see where it stabilizes and she's stabilizing big time. I don't understand what the hell's going on. Like she's reading zero. I don't get it. I honestly don't get it. Maybe it's not parasitic. No, freak. It kind of helps when your pole's still attached, right? I had this great idea of how I was going to do this. What am I on? I'm on 200 volts. Oh no, I'm not getting a reading. I'm not even getting a reading now. Why? Because nothing's touching. Hmm, there's quality for you. The uh, little leg broke off. Actually, maybe that's a strategy. That's going to be a question for you car guys. If the battery's super old, does it just lose the potential to hold a charge? Because if I plug you... See, the moment I plug it in, I don't know if you guys can hear that, but the, the headlight motors engage. This is the problem with poppy Abbey headlights. They're junk. This is why cars aren't made with them anymore. Hear that? I'll disconnect it. I don't know why the amp meter can't pull a friggin' signal off of that. That's a huge problem. So, here's a good question. Does it do the same thing if I keep the headlights open? Wow, those are some dirty lenses. They've seen many bugs. So now, if I connect you, it closes it. Is that supposed to do that? Weird. Very weird. Okay. I got more research to do. This is, uh, I never knew that was a thing because theoretically in the winter, you can open up the lights all the way and keep them locked open. So something is telling the motors to shut and I don't know what. So apparently, there is a headlight control module on the firewall next to the brake booster. I wonder, if I knew what a brake booster looked like, that'd be great. I'm thinking it's this big bastard right here. Here, let me take you guys along because you probably want to see what the hell I'm calling a big bastard. I think this is the brake booster right here. Could be wrong on that. So where the hell's the headlight control module? Is that this? Uh, I might have to reference my coloring book. So that's the problem is the headlights are actuating without being told to actuate. Do they both do that or just the one? Let's go ahead and crack these open. Well, the switch is in the off position, but like in the winter when people used to drive these cars to avoid the poppy uppies, freezing they would just open them up all the way unless they disconnect something because well there's only one wire going to it yeah these things are filthy they've seen many bugs impact them okay that one's open let me go ahead and get this guy here open let's see what happens when we send power to the system if they both slam shut all right here goes nothing Nothing. Oh, there they go. Is that a problem? I honestly don't know. Guys, I'm confused. This is something I'm going to need a, a proper car guy to answer because I don't know enough about these poppy uppy headlights and how they work. Obviously, the controller is working because it's closing them. And if I hook up the battery, which I'm going to do now, I might as well frig it. See so if I can get around here and actually get this sea sucker in there. I love how I can easily disconnect the battery, but then getting around all the split looms and shit to reconnect it is a freaking chore. Mind you, some of these split looms are probably put in here by me, wiring up stupid things like under dash lighting and stuff because I was dumb back in the day when I bought this car I was all like I want to be fast and furious too let's buy an LO3 great engine super fast 170 horsepowers watch out almost got beat by a Z24 Cavalier in a race so right now we got it plugged in 
Theoretically, I should be able to turn on the lights and they should just pop up. Yeah, and they're probably firing, yeah. So I don't, I don't know, I, I honestly don't know. I may just bite the bullet and buy a new battery because like I said, I've had that battery in there. Oh God, it's gotta be at least. Well, when I took it out in 2014, so, and I've killed it so many freaking times, just letting it sit, because I'm seeing such minimal amperage draw. I just, it confuses me about these headlights closing on their own. Now it could be the preliminary power test, like when you first plug it in, it closes the headlights. Like, can I open them up right now? Will they stay open or close on their own? You know, I'm wondering about that. If I open it up on its own, and I send power to it, and I cut the power, do they close? Because I know I saw a third gen in town driving around with these things stuck open. Like, I tried two different voltmeters, guys, and neither one was showing a substantial power law a drain. So, I don't know what to tell you. Unless both of them, I wasn't using them, right? I both had them both. So, well, the one you have only one option, but the other one you can set it to amps and you put it in the common, and it wasn't showing anything. So, let's see what happens if I power up the lights now. So, I don't know how that guy had to stay open, unless there's um, a motor delete you can buy for them, but they work. So, I don't know. Do you like my overspray? Pretty good, right? I'm a professional painter. That's a lie. I don't know what to tell you. I'm not really a mechanic. I just play one on YouTube and I don't do that well at it. So I, I have no idea what the major malfunction is here. Any of you car guys out there, if you have any ideas, let me know in the comments below because I'm flabbergasted. I don't know what's going on. It's kind of confusing me. For now, I'm just gonna seal this up. Mm -hmm. And it's pretty much ready to go for a drive, but I think I am going to do myself a solid. And we are going to uh, get a new battery for it in the near future. And see if that resolves the problem, because, oh yeah, I should probably close up my fuse holder, eh? That'd be smart. I'm not very smart, but sometimes I am. Sometimes I'm not, so whatever. Teach their own. Some of the designs in this car are pretty brilliant. Some of them are pretty stupid. Should get some grease for that door. Jesus Murphy, I sound like I'm on freaking Supernatural. But yeah, I honestly have no idea if the parasitic drain is caused by an old battery or a subsystem. But like I say, this is the reason why I make these videos where I'm clueless about a repair. It's because a lot of you guys out there know this shit. Some of you are probably mechanics working in a shop have dealt with a problem like this, somebody bringing in their car and the battery has parasitic loss. Well, now I'm wondering if it's parasitic loss because oh, there's one dirt dauber left. Let me deal with that little asshole. But I'm seriously starting to think a couple comments, a couple videos ago, I talked about the car and the parasitic drain and people were saying, Adam, you've killed that battery so many times and brought it back to life. Batteries don't like that. And it's true, I know, I know it's true. These batteries are not meant to drop below a certain voltage. They have a problem recovering. As you can tell, I hooked it up to the system and we're sitting at 11.8. So chances are I'll have to price out a new battery for it and then bring that battery in and swap it out. So get, I think it's like $13 core charge or something like that. So I'll give them the old, old busted and they can give me the new hotness and we'll see if that resolves the problem. I hope it does. But anyway, guys, that's all I got for today. So leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think about this whole ordeal because uh, I'm lost. Anyway, thanks for watching. Like, favorite, comment. Don't forget to subscribe. And until next time, guys, live it to win it. Peace the frig out. Sit, stupid, sit. Good dog.